Hello! How is everybody? Another gloomy day in the Berg. It's raining here. I live about 15-20 minutes outside of the city. Um, and weather isn't good here, so I'm sure it's not good there. I hope that you're finding ways to bring joy into your life, even if you can't get outside. Besides working, I'm going for a walk on days that are nice, which have been few and far between, unfortunately. And I'm doing jigsaw puzzles. Right now, we're doing a Star Wars jigsaw puzzle. Um, I'm reading, cooking a lot, uh, baking a lot, and watching way too much TV. Um, but it is what it is, right? So today for cooking, I am making um, my son and daughter's favorite soup in its split pea with ham because we had a ham for Easter dinner yesterday. And I'm making banana bread with chocolate chips. So that's what's on the menu. So what are you cooking? What are you baking? Let me know. Uh, some business first, and then we'll get around to um, some other things. But this last round of homework that you had to do, I only received 15 assignments out of my almost 80 students. 15. One, five. So first, get your work done. Please, thank you. Um, a couple of reasons. Because A, it helps me to check up on you, see how you're doing academically, how you're understanding the novel. Two, I have to take attendance on Tuesdays, just like as if you were sitting in my classroom. And one of the ways that I can take attendance is if you shoot me an email and say, I'm here, or if you turn in an assignment and um, I can mark you here. So even if you turn in an assignment on a Friday, I go back to Tuesday's attendance and I mark you present for Tuesday, which is English Day. And also, by getting your work done, it helps me to monitor your progress. So I keep, um, where is it? Yep. Yeah. I keep a packet here that lists all of your grades and all of the emails and all of the phone calls and all of that stuff that I've uh, reached out. Um, and it gives helps me to give you a participation grade. Now here's the thing. If I don't hear from you and log it down, I'm going to email you and email your parents. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to call you or your parents, whoever's phone number I can get a hold of, until I hear from you. So if you don't want to be hounded, just get your work done or reach out to me in an email and say, I'm working on my homework. It'll be handed in tomorrow. Um, if I still don't hear from you after I email you or phone call you, I have to turn your name into administration and then they check up on you. Um, we all need to know that you're safe and we all need to know that you're doing what needs to be done. You're still required to do some academics while we're out doing this homeschooling, this virtual learning. Okay, so that's my little lecture for the week. Get your work done. I only got 15 assignments and really, I don't know what's going on. I understand it's hard to get motivated because I said to a student who emailed me yesterday, I'm struggling too sometimes. You know, sometimes it's a struggle to just get anything done. And so the last thing that I want to do is my schoolwork, but I have to, and so I do. And so do you. So this week's lesson is provided from our district. And I'm not providing you with the lesson. So let me read a note here. For Tuesday, the English component of the lesson, it's about self-discipline. And it's going to be a Nearpod link that will be included in your folder on Schoology for this week's work. So it's a Nearpod link about self-discipline. Here's a couple of tips. I went through it, so I wanted to troubleshoot and make sure there were no problems. Um, I checked up on this. Three times it's going to say that the teacher has not enabled the collaborate feature for student paced mode. So you're going to see that up on the screen. 
ignore it. Just click through it to the next slide. I talked to somebody today and that's what we're supposed to do. So when it says, the teacher is not enabled the collaborate feature for student pace mode, ignore it, click to the next slide. So there's um, an almost 11 minute video that's included and it's a guy illustrating. It's actually pretty cool. I wish I could draw like that. I believe it's slide 21. But you need to watch this illustrated video to complete the questions that follow the video. Okay, so don't skip it. And I highly suggest going into the settings down at the bottom of the screen and slowing the video speed down to at least half speed or even less than half speed. I had to go back and watch it again um, to answer the questions after the video because he illustrates so quickly and he talks so quickly that I wasn't getting the points that he was making. And the more he illustrates, the harder it is to follow and understand his point. So I couldn't act, answer the questions that came after the video. So again, I suggest go into settings. You'll see it pretty easily and slow the video speed down to half speed. I think it's like 0.50, something like that. I don't know. I don't remember how they have it organized. Okay, so that's your lesson for this week is the Nearpod lesson, and that's provided by the district. So we're going to do our daily discovery together, which is an illusion. We've already done two illusions. They were biblical illusions. One was Good Samaritan, and the first one was, I don't remember, I don't remember. And let me look real quick. Can you wait for me? I have illusion of the day. Doo, doo, doo. Blind leading the blind. There we go. Phew. So I'm going to remind you of what an illusion is because some of you, this is relatively new information. Um, and then I'm going to read you our third illusion. And that's also on the schedule for you to reread. And maybe you can find some of those illusions this week when you're reading. <laughs> or uh, watching television. So an illusion is when an author makes an indirect reference to an idea, a figure, a text, or a place or an event that originates from outside of the text. It could also refer to something that happened earlier in the text. This is often called an internal illusion as opposed to a regular or external illusion. The verb form of the noun illusion is to allude so you could state that a writer alludes to or makes an allusion to. For instance, it's particularly common for writers to make allusions from Greek or Roman mythology or the Bible. Allusions are subtle and indirect, hinting at something you'd expect to know without telling you what it is. And the literary device is used to enhance the text, often by making it more relatable to the reader or illustrating either an example or the text's theme. Illusions are commonly used metaphorically, but can also be used ironically, and we use them in everyday speech. So this one is, um, illusion number three is Jekyll and Hyde. Have you ever heard that before? Jekyll and Hyde. So the background is, this is a literary illusion referring to Robert Louis Stevenson's novel, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In the novel, a man experiences a battle between his desire to be good and his urges to be evil. Dr. Jekyll struggles so much to repress his evil, evil urges that he creates a serum to separate his good side from his evil. This potion creates Jekyll's second personality, the cruel and remorseless Mr. Hyde. As time goes on, the friendly and pleasant Dr. Jekyll loses control as Mr. Hyde gains power and becomes increasingly violent. You may have seen cartoons or movies or even video games that have this illusion involved. So the meaning is that somebody who is Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, Mr. Hyde, is someone that has two sides of their personality. When a person presents one personality to a certain group, 
and a different to another group, they can be seen as having two personalities. This illusion usually has a negative connotation as it implies that someone is fake or two-faced. Hmm, interesting. You know anyone with a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde personality? I think we all do. Okay, so that's illusion number three. And then my last bit of business is to tell you what you need to do uh, for next week. Okay, so this week is considered a vacation week, but you still have work to do. Okay, you've got to watch the Nearpod link and answer the questions within the Nearpod. For English, you've had two weeks to do this. I assigned it last week, and this is just a reminder. You need to read chapters 9 and 10 for the week and do the study guide. That's it. If you've caught up on all your homework, that's all you have to do is read chapter 9 and 10 and do the study guide. Okay? If you're not caught up on your work, this is what you have to do. You have to read to chapter 10 for Lord of the Flies for next week. Catch up on your study guide to chapter 10 for Lord of the Flies for next week. You also need to choose which assignment from last week you want to complete. Complete. Remember, I only got 15 assignments, so many, 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 many of you still have homework to do for me. So that means you've got work to do this week. But they're all super easy, and I've designed them to take tops half an hour, 15 minutes, really. So the assignments that you could choose from were to either create a gift for the darkness or just take a picture of a gift for the darkness with an explanation, to write a first person story from the perspective of the Lord of the Flies, or to choose a real tropical island and report out to me about that. All of the details for that can be in last week's folder, so look for the details. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, email me. So email me. My email is a little different because Willette Thatcher has three T's in a row. So I'm going to tell you it's L-W-I-L-L-E-T-T-T-H-A at P-L-A-T-T-S-C-S-D dot org. Email me anytime with questions just to say, hey, just to say you're working on your work. Touch base. I worry about you. It's my job as your second mom. And I miss you all. I miss being in the classroom. I miss our banter. I miss, you know, keeping you in line and, and having you make me laugh. Um, I hope you're doing well. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you soon.